Welcome to another episode of Quiz the Music Man. And uh, I'm Tony Underwood. I'm the Music Man. And this is on both uh, a blog and a vlog. Uh, so sometimes uh, on the blog, you're not seeing anything uh, or the podcast. And uh, I'll be talking about uh, do it this way and whatever. And you won't see that. I'll try to explain it as best I can. And then uh, on the video, you've kind of got the good stuff. But if you're listening to the podcast, you can always uh, go to YouTube and find it on my channel. It's just Tony Underwood Music. Uh, and I've got those on there as well. <clears throat> so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, learning music. And probably the, the, the two most important aspects of it are the two things that will... Uh, keep people from learning music. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'll show you some things. I'll talk about uh, things. Uh, a lot of this stuff is life skills as well. And uh, then uh, at the very end, I've got a little special bonus to talk about a little bit uh, and got a few things to say about life in general that will uh, hopefully help you out. Uh, we did a few of these uh, in the past about record deals and uh, music label deals and contracts and about signing it. And I got a lot of feedback for that. So I think in the future, I'm going to just do some things, just basic contract as well. Now, it's not a law course. Uh, I don't know anything about contract law, but we all deal with contracts in our life. So look for some of those coming up. Okay, so... Here's what happens. People will come in and take music lessons or they'll get a guitar for Christmas or for a holiday or for a special occasion or somebody will just give them a guitar or a keyboard and they'll see someone on, uh, you know, the interwebs or at school or something. And uh, boy, I wish you could do that. And then older uh, folks, adults uh, uh, have seen that all their life and they've all secretly wished they could do that. And some of them might have taken a few lessons and they soon find out uh, the secret nobody tells them uh, and that music is very difficult. Let me share with you that I'm a professional musician. I make my, I make my uh, uh, living uh, playing music and teaching music and uh, uh, I'm all involved in music my whole life. Uh, and... I uh, was not full-time forever, but then I went full-time, and uh, it's very tough. I've done some other things, too. I uh, was uh, always loved math and physics in school, uh, never studied much, didn't have to, made very good grades, uh, aced all the tests, uh, the standardized testing, uh, went to college for chemistry major, uh, had to just drop out of college for financial reasons and went into real estate and business and uh, uh, managed construction companies and work construction and did all that. And uh, there's a lot to learn in those things, but uh, none of that compares to the difficulty of music. When I decided to go back and get my degree and really do this, it's, it's tough. It's a lot of work. Uh, but that's not said to discourage you uh, because I have a secret at the end of this uh, podcast and vlog that will uh, help you with that. So stay to the end. That's a little clickbait, but it is the truth. So let's talk about, uh, you know, people, students come in different ages and they start playing and they're going out pretty good. And uh, a year or two years go by and, you know, they end up not continuing. And there's a host of reasons. I'll go through some of them. But you see, I'm in a great position because I also used to work in, uh, uh, worked in the church for many years and worked in another organization that had a lot of people in it. I've worked in big businesses. Uh, and I've seen people uh, with small businesses and things. I'm a small business owner. And I've been able to see the young students, the preteens, the teens, the young adults, the, the parents, and on and on. <laughs> and uh, there are some themes that you see. Now, I'm not uh, saying I'm such a great philosopher or 
got it all figured out. Uh, let me share with you any of these things I talk about. I've, I've done them over and over again, still do. Any mistakes or thing that might be a mistake, I've done it. I'm going to write a book one day, How to Succeed in Life, by reading about all the mistakes you could ever make, because I've made them over and over again. Uh, but it, it is not uh, the failure that defined you. It's, uh, you know, the flow. Sure, you flow down the river, you bump into the bank more than other people maybe. But if you're smart, you'll get to the end. Uh, so let's talk about uh, why people stop taking lessons or why they don't even start. And there's a lot of reasons. People say it's money. They say it's time. They say it's logistics getting there and back. And I've heard that for so many years that finally with this COVID crisis, we went to a lot of virtual lessons, which we still do many of those. We do in-person lessons as well. Uh, so I, for six months, I advertised and did some uh, Facebook Lives and said if people uh, had children enrolled in our school and uh, if they wanted to learn an instrument, they could join into my live webinars, lessons. And then also I would give them lessons and it would be because it was money, time, and logistics. They would be free. They would be whatever time they have available. And they'd be over the interwebs. They wouldn't have to come in. And after six months, I had zero takers. Yeah, zero. Now, maybe I'm not a good instructor. I'm not saying I'm a great instructor, but in the school, anytime I open up lesson times, they fill up immediately. I at one time was doing 60 lessons a week, which is the definition of stupidity. It's just too much. You think, well, that's only 30 hours. Well, no, that's like uh, saying, uh, uh, you know, uh, that last touchdown you know, Brett Farr has to make that super thing, a one in a million play, that you do that over and over again every day, you know, uh, or someone who runs a 26 uh, mile marathon, you don't run one every day, or, uh, you know, someone who uh, completes a, a, a really tough project in engineering, designs a bridge, stays late, you know, uh, for four or five weeks on end, you don't just go back and do another one, you know. So, uh, believe me, 60 students is a lot. Uh, so, it's not a, a fact of that. It uh, doesn't matter if I'm good or bad. I can definitely get students. And then, in researching and talking to other people, I uh, realized and found out, and they educated me a little bit, that uh, if you uh, let people do things for free, they don't put any value in it. And there's a reason for that, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And the most successful people charge for that. Uh, so I'm going to become a successful pizza pe person. I'm going to have a um, series of online lessons called Play Guitar Now. And I'm going to be your music coach. And if you want information about that, just uh, send me a message in any way, and I'll send you that information. But that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to uh, spread the word about that. So we're going to title this eight minutes in. Get out of your own way, because I've heard other people say that. That was the best advice they gave me. Get out of my own way. And what does that mean? Well, it means roadblocks. It means letting our lives be controlled by other things. And this isn't some big mystical, psychological guru thing. This is actual examples that I've seen. It's facts. And I'm the last person anymore to try to sway someone's opinion with facts, because I realize late in life that doesn't work either. But I'm going to try to talk you through and appeal to your emotion, which is how people control other people. Uh, so I'm going to let you control yourself, and I'm going to try to appeal to you through your emotions. We let our lives and our uh, you know, our educations, our music education, be controlled by others, by do ga they gaslight you, they shame you, they dangle the carrot, they use the someday aisle, 
They might use physical force, verbal force, threats, threats of loss, support, of shaming you. So what is gaslighting? Gaslighting is when you go to someone and say, I have a problem or I want to do music and they'll listen to you and then suddenly it's all about them. Oh, they're hurting because you've been mean to them or you're not letting them do what they want to do. Or, and they'll appeal to your motherly instincts, your fatherly instincts, your all this. And suddenly you're in this big hamster wheel fixing their problems. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I came here with my problem. What about that? Well, that's because you don't take care of yourself. <laughs> so uh, that's called gaslighting when you come to someone. And it's based on a movie film called Gaslight. And what happens in the olden times, instead of lights, they had gas lights, like an old lantern all over the place. And the gas came in in a pipe. And what this fellow did is he... he uh, kind of did some brain uh, control on his wife by making the gas go up and down and sparking and then saying, oh, I didn't see any of that. I don't know what that's going on. You see a lot of that today. Shaming is making you feel you're unworthy or that you're not being a good whatever, a good partner, a good child, a good spouse, a good worker, a good boss, a good friend. Uh, dangling the carrot, saying, oh, I don't know about that. I need this stuff. If you don't want to do what I want to do, then maybe we're not, shouldn't be together. Maybe stuff, go, uh, guys do that to girls all the time, especially teenage girls. And uh, uh, you see it all over places. And uh, they even teach that in all these forums. It's called red pill or blue pill or something about you, you know, uh, treat people, basically treat women terribly and they'll like you. And, you know, unfortunately it works. Works 90% of the time. Uh, it's been crazy. I see that a lot too, and I'm just awestruck why that would work. But anyway, that's a whole nother, uh, uh, whole nother podcast. Some people use force and verbal abuse. That's something that if you're under that, you need to go get you a new place. That's a whole nother uh, thing here. Uh, threats of isolation, loss of support or shame. And you think, well, what does this have to do with music? Well, you don't know how many parents I've said, I've seen, watched, and they'll be like, that's as good as you can do. You missed this note. You've got to go back and do this. You've got to do that. You know, and that's really a form of verbal abuse. It's a form of abuse because it's, uh, you know, people learning music, uh, it's two plus two isn't four. In music, it can be five. It can be six. It can be whatever. Uh, you know, I joke, a mistake in music is improv and jazz, uh, do you always want to do it? No, but sometimes you can't do it right without doing it wrong. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, uh, history. You know, when did Columbus discover America? It's a, a date, uh, 1692, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Uh, but if you put 1605, uh, you get it wrong and that's it. It's not like that in music. So you have to be careful that when you go to someone and want to take music lessons or uh, need help with something, uh, that they're not doing these things to you. You can look this stuff up, gaslighting, shaming, dangling the carrot, the blue pill, red pill. It's all over YouTube and that stuff. Verbal abuse and force, that's something that, you know, if you're undergoing some problems, you may need to uh, get some real help. A good call, a hotline, a trusted friend, a pastor, a uh, uh, worship leader, uh, somebody like that. Uh, there are a lot of hotlines and stuff for that. Uh, we let our emotions. Uh, I've seen anger. Anger is is can be described as fear, uh, frustration, or pain, and then it manifests itself. So when a guy cuts you off in traffic and you blow up, you're not mad at him. You're mad because you know that person's a pain in the butt and your boss is terrible and the job's eating your brain and all that stuff. So you see, you need to deal with those issues first. But we'll let that, I, I've heard the story of someone who had a, a single mom who was living with their parents and got a great job, uh, lots of money, working at a, a, a club or country club or some large restaurant. And uh, when COVID hit, they were trying to keep things busy and they said, well, let's all clean up. Uh, and we just pass out today this and we'll rotate it next week. And the person had just become manager of uh, 
this area and they just got all upset. Said, I'm not doing this. This is crazy. And they blew up and quit their job. Well, even if it was not a very good thing to do, uh, it wasn't a very, uh, you know, thing uh, uh, that was part of your job description or whatever, that probably wasn't the best way to handle it. Because now you're out of a job in a tough time with a, a child and you're not even got a place of your own. So uh, we, we let that happen with our playing too. We'll get to a point and we'll just get frustrated and we'll stop and we'll quit. Or we'll, we'll punish ourselves. Well, I'm not going to be a professional guitarist. I'm going to give it up. That's like saying, you know, I'm eating this cake, but I'm not going to be a professional baker or a professional pie eater. I'm giving this stuff up. Or, ah, these woods. I took a walk in the woods every month. So I'm not going to be a professional guide. I'm not going to be hiking in these woods for any money. I'm not going to make any money. I'm out of here. Uh, but you see, those are the things that can make your life worth living. Uh, and uh, we'll let that, we'll, use, we'll be violent. We'll throw things around. We'll uh, quit. We'll yell. We'll have a big hissy fit and blow up. And that's a way of controlling other people sometimes. But it, it never works out well for the person either. It might work out well right at that time. But uh, that's what happens. And I've seen it in lesser things too. Um, uh, it, and, and they use these excuses uh, because of this. They're not going for the gold. You've got to go for that brass ring. And that's an old saying. You've got to jump and grab the ring to get somewhere. You have to make a, a kind of leap of faith in yourself. And let me explain. People think they know what leap of faith means. Well, you know, you make sure you have a step here and a step there and a hand there. No. Faith is where you have to risk it. You are risking falling off of that off of that mountain. Say you're hiking up the mountain. When you take a leap of faith, there's a gap you've got to jump. And if you don't make it, it, it could be the end for you, or at least a lot of pain and drain, or you won't make it up the mountain. There has to be something to give up. You have to be able to risk something to make that leap of faith. Now, I'm not saying you should be crazy and go kill yourself, but uh, this is a figurative leap of faith, not saying, oh, the heck with this, I'm, I'm not the best guitarist, but I'm going to play in this recital anyway. I don't care. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to practice. I'm going to do my best. Because you see, people will also use a, a perfection as a way to keep from succeeding because see, if they're not perfect, they don't have to try. It's excellence you should strive for. And excellence is simply doing the best possible you can at that time with the skills you have and the tools you have right then. That's excellence because then you can say, I did the best that was possible at that time. Now, can I help myself? Can I make progress. Yes. What do I need to do? Well, based on how I performed, I want to go back and learn this. You see, you're not telling yourself you're stupid or can't play. Uh, you know, don't be into, I, I go to get into this all the time. I have a lot of instructors and, and young people who grow up and they're in college and they graduate and in the arts, the performing arts, you know, when you're 16 or so, you need to be out there performing. We're going to get into how to do that in a minute. Uh, but they all want to go back and get more training. I'm like, you you know enough. <laughs> Music and the arts, there it's a lifetime learning. So yeah, that instructor who's in its 50s knows way more than you do. Big deal. They're not going to be out there uh, singing to a, a bunch of 20-year-olds. So uh, go, go do it. You're ready. Go, just go. And here's what you have to do. You have to think of concurrency. So first you have to use your why. You have to find out your why. We talked about that. Who are you? What do you want to do? What do you like? What feeds you? What do you feed? Set some goals, have a written plan or an idea board or a vision board. And you want to be in concurrency. So you want to immerse yourself. If you want to play basketball, be playing basketball uh, all the time. 
Go learn about basketball. Take your classes at school and take the trash out, but learn about basketball. Write down the need, the things that you need to do to, to get to your goal. Write down all of them and say to yourself, okay, if, if I didn't have this, is it possible to get the goal? If the answer is yes, get it off the page. Uh, people will sidestep. They'll want to go and get a training in this and training in that and, and not just training, but some elaborate education you don't need. Go do it. Uh, jump into the water, you know, and if you have to live in somebody's garage, if you have to take out the trash, you have to clean up your room. If they say, I want you to do this, you say to them, this is my goal. I want to be a musician. I want to make money in a year. So I'll gladly do this if you will allow me to rehearse here, if you'll allow me to take classes online, if you'll allow me to play in a band, I'll go to school, those kind of things. And, you know, if you're an adult and you're making your own decisions and people are holding you back, get you some new people. Now, I'm not saying to just kick your girlfriend out or your boyfriend out or divorce your spouse or, you know, tell your parents, give them the finger and get out of there. Make you an, an adult plan. Nobody can tear down your adult plan. You know, uh, when the, the, you've, you know, the, the smart kid wants to be, uh, uh, wants to do nails. And the one's like, what are you talking about doing nails? How are you going to make money? What, what if that student had said, well, I've been making money. Here it is. I got $10,000 I've made in the last month. Uh, I've got a job lined up. I'm buying this chair at this nail place, and they're going to let me work there over time, and I'm still going to have time to go to school. Uh, you know, that's that's hard to uh, discredit. But to the parents' credit, they know that if you're just dreaming, that ain't cutting. you got to do it, so immerse yourself. Get you a side hustle to get your scratch to make your living, to feed yourself. Uh Hang out, you know, and it's not so much getting rid of the people that bring you down. Go hang out with people that support you, like-minded people that are working in this industry and get to know them and get to hang out with them. And I'll tell you, you hang out with people that are like-minded and do things with them. Don't just do whatever you're interested in. Like if you're, you know, all interested in soccer, don't just play soccer all the time. Go to dinner, go on vacation together. And I'll tell you, Pretty soon you'll have a circle of positive people that are going places and doing things. And you might find, uh, you know, uh, a young woman that catch your eye. Or if you're a woman, a, a guy that you see is a real nice guy. And, you know, you might find future relatives and future friends in that group. You might not, but you might will if you stick with the positive people that are going places. Uh, now, what does this have to do with music? It has everything to do with music because, you know. You have to, uh, uh, I always tell people, practice is at one note. If you're reading guitar uh, off of a uh, staff, which is the five lines and four spaces, and it's a, let's say it's a two lines of music you have to learn to play on your guitar, and it switches from two strings, and there's three notes on each of those strings. So the way to do that is to start with the first note. Where is it? How do you finger it? What is it called? Look back in your book and see uh, where it is on the staff. You have a system for finding out the letter name. Then when you know the letter name, you can go to the page where it talks about how to play that note and play it. And let's, let's say, and here's why I'm going to show the people that have a video and use the don't angle. See it. I'm holding my guitar and the first string, the bottom string, the E string. I'm going to play an F, which is the first fret, first finger. I press it down. So I'm going to get my pick here. So I have an E. I have an F. I'm going to play it. I'm going to anchor my right hand, put my pinky on down. I'm going to go up until I find that first string and play F. Play it again. And I'm going to say F, and I'm going to look at the F. F, F. And then I'm going to put both hands away. I'm going to put both hands in position and play it. F. Take both hands away, look away, look back to the guitar, put my right hand in position, my left hand fret, find the string, F, again, F, up, wrong string, F, again, 
F again, F again, F again, F again, F again. You can do that 200 times in just five minutes. Then the next note's a G. Where is that G? It's on top of the staff. What's the note on top of the staff? I have a system to find out. Every good boy does fine. The top line is F. The next uh, note that can exist has to exist in this space right above the top line. And the next note would be the next note in the alphabet would be G. So I'm going from an F to a G. How do I play a G? I have to look it up. It's on the first string. It's third finger, third fret. And I'm going to play it. G. And I'm going to say G. 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 Take away my right hand. G. Right hand. Take away. Put it back. G. Take away. Put it back. G. Left hand. Take it away. Put it back. G. Left hand. Take it away. Put it back. G. Both hands, take them away, put them back, G. Take it away, G. G, G, G. How'd I play that F? Everything was the same except my first finger hit the first fret. I'm gonna do that. G, F, G, play F, G, F, G. You can play that 200 times. Take your hands away, put them back, play F, G. Put them back, F, G. And then go to the next note. Once you get a measure, go to the next measure and learn that next measure. And then when you get those both, you put them together. Now you might think this takes a long time. Well, it doesn't. I mean, that's about two or three minutes. In about 10 minutes, I could learn a whole measure. And a song might only be about 32 measures repeated over and over again. And out of that, the... Uh, first 16 are pretty similar and the next 16 are pretty similar and you just repeat those over and over again what's more you're learning how to learn that process of going one note at a time and looking away and going back and looking away and going back you're teaching yourself to do that faster and faster and faster so let's say it takes you a total of an hour work to learn a two-line song if you learn it this way at that point It'll be memorized already. You don't have to worry about it. You'll be pictured in your brain to where if you ever mess up, it's just like reading off your relative's name. You go, oh, no, I know what that is. Or saying, counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, get to 1,001, 1,000, oh, it's 1,001, 1,002. That's how you'll have it memorized. And let's say it takes you an hour to learn that two-line song because a two-line song can be a minute or two. It can be four or five different repeats uh, and be 30 seconds to a minute of a song. Uh, it takes you an hour and a half. Well, you learn three or four songs like that and suddenly you're down to half an hour learning a song like that. Well then, with that hour and a half, you can learn maybe 10 lines. Well, now you got a real song there. And within six months, within Within six months time, you can learn a, a song of 32 to 64 measures in an hour. And that's a regular pop song or classical song. And then there you go, you're on your way. Six months go by and you're playing and learning and learning all the new stuff you wanna learn, learning how to play the same thing differently, stylistically. Uh, and that's all it takes. So get out of your own way. I've covered a lot of ground. I'm going to kind of break this up in the next few blogs and talk about it because it, it applies right to learning guitar. It applies to learning everything. It applies to life. Your uh, promotion, your relationships, all that. You work on them. You do the little things. Do them well. Do them over and over. Uh, you know, take an approach of excellence, not perfection, excellence, uh, and you will succeed. Uh, and if you're interested in learning guitar, I have my online system coming soon, and I'm going to be your music coach, and I'm going to stick with you and make sure you learn it. Believe me, it's 12 units, 8 to 16 weeks, or maybe shorter, maybe longer. What does it matter? What were you doing 16 weeks ago? Well, you weren't playing guitar, but I can get you to be playing guitar, and I'll show you all that information. Shoot me a IM, DM, whatever, SM, IM, phone call, text, email, you, you just... Get me the information and I'll get it to you. This is the Music Man signing off uh, on uh, what holds us back, roadblocks, ourselves. Uh, and I hope you have a great week and just get out of your own way. 
See you next week. Bye-bye.